From the second I saw a photo of Westcott's Zeppelin, I knew I had to have it. With three sizes to choose from, I opted for the largest at 59 inches. This thing is a beast. Definitely a shock and awe addition to any shoot. My question was, can it perform as good as it looks? I'd seen reviews in studio, but what I hadn't seen is a real world test, which is why I brought it out to the deserts of Nevada to see just how the real world treated this blimp. Out of the bag, this thing is a bit daunting. With 16 rods to coax into holes on the separately purchased speed ring, it takes a few times to get used to. Having a few people definitely helps make it easier. The speed ring takes the weight of the Zeppelin off of your strobe, which makes a huge difference, as anyone with an extra large softbox can attest to. At just under seven pounds, it is light enough for one person to carry, but also light enough to require some serious sandbagging. The wind is kicking up, so this is a, we're gonna really see. I mean, I think we got two human sandbags, plus five real sandbags, plus some, um, that's about it. Yeah, let's, okay, so, okay, you position the gun and I'm gonna position this when you're up, ready? So this doesn't have to be totally, this could be like, cause it would, it would be uncovered. Yeah. yeah, see how it's just hidden? Yeah. That's perfect, okay, look up just a little bit. Just as with any piece of gear, knowing when and how to use it is important. Sure, I could have done your typical studio shoot, but where's the fun in that? I built the concept from the ground up with the Zeppelin in mind. Knowing that shooting full bodies, group and car shots will require a light modifier big enough to spread the light. Of course, the Zeppelin without the strobe would be better suited as a tent. I'm using the Einstein lights, which in combination with the Zeppelin is strong enough to overpower the sun. Okay, um, open up the, the vest and let me see. Yes, there we go. That's awesome. The bigger the light source and the closer it is to your subject, the softer the light will appear. The Zeppelin is big enough to allow me to step in front of it and still have it project light onto my subject. All right, so, what's up? Yeah, you gotta move the car. Well, well actually, what if you put the camera on the inside? Yeah. We still might have to move the cars. All right, so your motivation is, you know, you've done this a million times. You've got this, you have, you have no fears. At this point, the world's gone such shit that if you die, you die. You know, it's like you've got to survive, so you do what you have to do. And if death happens, death happens. So you're kind of sitting here, you got the gun to the side, low end, right? So we're out here on the dry lake bed. I mean, the sun the sun is in the complete opposite end of the sky. We've been out here since, we've been out shooting since like nine o'clock a.m. We did all the cinematic stuff. Now we're out here we're getting the car dirty in the background. We're setting the Zeppelin up. The winds died down. Uh, we got our next model, Sarah X, out here and she is looking dirty in a good way. So let's go see what we can do. You didn't shave your knee. Photoshop. I'll add more hair, don't worry. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Thank you. Sarah, you wanna give me a sexy face? More of well, that? Oh, I guess we'll try that one. I'll put that one up. I'm sorry, would you like me to find him? During the first half of the lake bed shoot, we had the sun as our key light. The long and hard shadows cast by the sun limited my placement options as the shadows cast would cut right through the scene. You know, I just do my own thing. I just take pictures. All right guys, uh, look off towards the, like straight ahead. There we go. Uh, Eric, your car is, um, yeah, it's in the way, and uh, Joyce, you have the longest shadow on Earth. 
Um, oh, D, let's move this in until the shadow just reaches. I, I don't want the shadow to, to interfere, but I want it as close as we can get it. For the majority of the shots, I had the zeppelin between 10 and 12 feet from my subjects, allowing me to get the shot without having the strobe interfering within the frame. Smaller modifiers would have to have been placed much closer to the subject. I'm not a gear collector. I don't buy gear for the sole sake of padding my arsenal. I guess you could say I'm a minimalist, only having what I need to get the job done. I saw the Zeppelin and felt it could be a valuable asset within my collection. After shooting with it both in and out of the studio, I can honestly say I'll be using it often, but it is a bit of a hassle to set up. Not really a modifier I'd use on a solo mission or in a small shooting environment. To say I'll have it in my bag wherever I go would be stretching the truth. Will I use it often? Without a doubt. It's a versatile modifier that throws beautiful light and it works across a wide range of shoots.